is uh, coming up with stuff like that. So I'm pleased to uh, present to you today here, live from the Noman Green Screen Hangar in the shadow of the Hollywood sign, as we say. We're going to have um, uh, Cedric, you're here, CEO. And we also have, I don't want to mess this up because you told me and I'm like feeling Guilherme? Guillaume. 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 That's right. I'm sorry. And also uh, Marco Plouffe, make the face. Yeah. <laughs> right? Plouffe. That's the Plouffe face. Okay. So uh, put your hands together in a warm uh, ZBrush community welcome. And around the world. Are All right. Thank you. I'm good. All right. Am I mic'd correctly? Can you everybody hear me well? All right, okay, cool, great, great, so uh, we can start. Uh, well, uh, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, so, well, I, we already have been presented, but uh, Marco, Guillaume, Cedric, um, together we are uh, Chaos Masons, and we will allow Chaos Maison also. <laughs> Chaos Maison for anybody who wants. It's Maison perfect with house. us. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it's, no, that's, it's allowed. It's like perfect. That's, uh, we're actually going to change the name now. We're going to call all lawyers and uh, change all of that, okay, cool. I think. <laughs> there you go. Um, so, um, uh, like, uh, like some people know us, but like for people who don't, uh, just to give you a little idea of who we are, we are a uh, outsourcing studio. Um, it's mostly dedicated for uh, character modeling and character, character design for the video game industry, but we also like do a little bit of uh, film and uh, collectibles as well. Um, the, um, so me and Cedric, we founded the company a few uh, years ago, and uh, Guillaume now is part of the team as another uh, one of our artists from Montreal. And uh, we also have a lot of people working for us. We have like a core team that's been with us since the beginning, and it's mostly like all freelancers, but some people has been with, have been with us since the beginning. So we have like a little family uh, thing happening. And uh, also we hire some talents, like some that come and go, and uh, so we're always like working with new people. Uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, in terms of clients, uh, okay, you can see well. In terms of uh, clients, we work with like people all over the world. Uh, like I said, mostly for video games, but like we've been working with Epic, Electronic Arts, Larian Studio, Blue Hole, Hyra Studio, ADOS, Gameloft, Ge Gearbox with Borderlands 3 that just came out. Pretty good game. And um, yeah, we've been working with like Blur also and uh, Sideshow Collectible, XM, Prime 1, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it's really nice to be able to work with so many clients and so many people all over the world because you really get to learn a lot of things, a lot of different way of working, and it's a, it's a pretty interesting uh, aspect. And um, the one of the interesting thing that it brought to us was uh, this like versatility in uh, style and uh, in everything, uh, which makes like a great uh, it's a great aspect to be able to have like this versatility. Uh, and have like so many clients that can come to us because of that. So at first it was not, uh, we, we didn't have like that much style, that much different styles in our portfolio, but over the years, over working with so many people, we got there. Um, so something that we think is a good definition of uh, what Chaos Mason does, uh, it's really in par with like the, uh, the benchmark of quality we try to always accomplish. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to always get there. Uh, we make it like one of our priorities, though. I think that's a reason why uh, people come to us, actually. So we always try to just like keep the bar like right there and, uh, and push it upwards. And uh, also, for, um, it's, it, we build teams, right? And it's really important to be able like, to teach the people to make sure that they can also like, be there when, when we work with them and when we deliver the work to the client. So that's something that's really also really important for us. Um, the relationship uh, with our clients also is really important. Uh, we really try to always like, have a good time, have a good communication with them, respect their deadlines, all that jazz. Super important stuff, but uh, we really, really put a lot of stress on ourselves to really always accomplish it well. And in terms of our relationship with our artists, we really try to be human. Uh, we always we remembered when we were artists, but we're still also artists. So by working with other artists, we always try to make sure things are fair for them, and that everybody has fun, people feel listened to, and that also people can grow by being with us. So even if we are working with a lot of people uh, as freelancers. Uh, we always try to have like as much proximity as we can to them so that we can actually have like this little dynamic happening um, Something that's actually um, Also pretty interesting is uh, well some of you know we actually have like a couple of uh, like resin kit that we actually do and uh, Maybe some of you are gonna be happy to know that we in the future in the near future. We're actually working on uh, expanding this 
and having more of our IP and having maybe some that would be colored. Uh, and we're really trying to like expand because we do mostly video games, but we love this aspect. And uh, by doing resin kit like this, we can actually uh, really work on our own IP and our own ideas and bringing up to life by printing them and painting them. So uh, like a as a little teaser, we have like this one coming soon, the, the Flower Power Defender. <laughs> uh, this one's a mess. It's like 30, 40 pieces, I think. It was really complicated to print, but Onich did a good job. And um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Uh, this one also is uh, something that's coming soon. We're going to also try to have them painted. So it's going to actually bring us to like a, a next level for our uh, collectible, uh, collectible adventures. Um, so we have like a, so much, so many things we can show you. We have pr easily like 15 hours of presentation, possibly, but we're going to condense it into an hour and a half. Um, just give me a sec. Oh yeah, and uh, so about like Q&A, just to let you know that we are going to uh, allow Q&A for when we're going to switch places and we're going to prepare like our, uh, our computer, so we're going to try to maximize our time. And also at the end of the presentation, we'll also be open to Q&A. So uh, just to let you know, just, um, just remember your question, and when it will be time, we will actually allow it. And uh, I think we're also going to be like in another room after the presentation, so that yeah. So like, if anybody like has a question that doesn't really have to do with the presentation or whatever, uh, just uh, remember it, remember it and come and see us, and we'll have way more time, way less stress, <laughs> and we'll answer your questions uh, the best that we can. So um, yeah. And uh, did I miss something? No, I think I'm good. Uh, we're going to start a presentation now uh, because I think that what's interesting is probably more of the demonstrations than the talking. So uh, first, Cedric will uh, show um, something that has to do with what are we showing? Lineups. Uh, yeah, mini kind so of something, stuff. Something, yeah. something. <laughs> like, like we're going to show you like a co concepting in ZBrush uh, using like lineups and shapes. Uh, then Guillaume is going to show uh, like more on the production side how to actually do stylized character akin mm -hmm. to his style or akin to like he's been working on Fortnite a lot. So uh, I mean it's like pretty much like you know that style very well that's now. <laughs> and afterwards I'll be uh, dissecting a uh, like a 3D piece uh, that's hard surface and uh, try to show you as much as much as much technique as I can within the time that we have. So uh, good. yep, My let's uh, let's start like this. Okay, good, good, good. Woo. My So now, James, uh, let me just put the right picture on screen. Where is my? Okay, good. Tu peux fermer la. Tu peux fermer l'internet si tu veux. Uh, yep. Yeah, I know. Thank you, thank you. I try, I try also. <laughs> so now, uh, let's talk about concept. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go through the full uh, uh, process, concept process, but only one part of it, which is. Uh, doing silhouettes and lineups. Because, uh, and there are many reasons for that. Actually, there are two different reasons for that. The first one is uh, because it's my favorite part. When I want to have fun, relax during my free time, I mostly do silhouettes. And the other, uh, it helps me actually, uh, why it's relaxing for me, because, and it's also very useful for me as an artist, it's because uh, it helps me to come up with something unique, fresh, and different most of the time. And the second reason why uh, I would like to talk about silhouettes is because whatever the project, whatever the star you're working on, you have to start from something, and it's mostly silhouettes. So now I just I would like to show you one picture, very basic picture. Ah, oh God. Okay. So uh, when we look at the picture, we can see that silhouettes are very important, actually, uh, and because they help us to just uh, to distinguish different groups of characters, of archetypes, and styles. Also, when we look at one specific row here, for example, this one, uh, when we look at all the characters in this lineup, uh, we can see that they are very unique from each other, and it's something very important that will help us to just push the diversity, the quality, and get a better group at the end. So as I just mentioned, uh, Lineups. I'm going to talk about a little bit more about that because I do think that um, doing lineups is probably the best way for me uh, to approach the concept work. 
So uh, here is, let me show you different creatures and characters I did uh, over the last years on different kind of projects in different companies. So um, why for me lineups are very important? Actually, the best thing uh, coming in mind for me was uh, it's because it helps me to just enhance the creativity because it's forcing me to, uh, to diversify with different kinds of shapes and volumes. Um, another reason which is very important, especially for me as well, just because uh, I can get bored very easily when I work on something. Uh, when you work with, li with uh, lineups, uh, it helps you to just keep having fun uh, working on them. Because as an artist, uh, when you work on only one asset at a time, uh, after a couple of days, you can get bored and you have to keep being motivated by, by, by your work. And actually, when you work on several characters at the same time, it helps to just uh, try to not to get bored. You just have to switch on another creatures or character. So uh, this is very powerful for that, uh, working with lineups. Another point which is very important when you work with lineup, it's because uh, you focus on the content, not the details. Uh, don't get me wrong, working on details, it could be good because sometimes you, you just want to explore different kind of things like, I don't know, accessories, embroidery, or different kind of details. But at the end of the process, or at the end of the work, or whatever, uh, the most important thing is the entire character. And another point, uh, which is very important actually when you work with lineup, it's because uh, it's all about universe creation. So because you work with different characters, you don't, uh, you don't work only on characters. You work on characters who can belong to a specific group, world, or universe. So actually, it helps you to just define a subject. Uh, it helps you to challenge yourself with an art direction, so you make sure that all the flows, accessories, and details are fitting in that group. Uh, it helps you also to create some background stories. And at the end, it helps you to just refine both story and assets at the same time to keep them consistent and to help enhance the final package. So actually, when you work with, with lineups, uh, it's not all about just characters. It's something much bigger. So now, uh, let's go, go through the pitch. Oh, God, sorry. Uh, oh, oh, to zoom. Zoom. Can so I do that? Ah, yeah. oh, it works. Perfect. So now let's go through some of them, and I would like to list some examples of uh, lineups we could uh, figure out actually when we work, just to help us uh, to define different kind of lineups. So, for example, we could imagine a lineup based on visuals, very basic stuff. So we could imagine a big character, thin character, small one. So the big one could be tall and strong, the thin one could be agile, and the small one could be weak. So that could be an example. Another example of lineup we could do could be based on skills. For example, if we look at this one, ah, good, this one here, we could imagine a creature uh, with wings, uh, Another one with four legs, another one with big, uh, could be big and slow, uh, a normal type of character, an older one, for example. So the guy with wings could be a scout watching from the sky. Uh, the one, a quadruped, could be also a scout. And the big and slow one could be a transporter or builder. The normal type of character could be a soldier or worker. And for example, the older character could be a chief or a wise character. So another example we could have in mind when we talk about uh, lineups, we could imagine a lineup based on natural constraints. So for example, the first thing we have in mind, actually I have in mind when I talk about that, it just, uh, we talk about animals. So natural constraints could have a bird, a fish, a dog, or a mole, for example. So the bird can fly, the fish can swim, the dog can run, and uh, the mole uh, digs. And also, it's good, I would like to finish with another example, because it's good to do some lineups based on something basic ideas, it's good. But sometimes it's also good to try to explore even more uh, the kind of variation and opportunities you could have in a, in a lineup. So let's show you another one. 
So for example, this one is just to illustrate uh, a lineup that could be uh, based on morphing abilities. So for example, we could imagine uh, this, oh God, this creature like a rhino type of character, and we could imagine some part of its body just uh, open up. Same thing for this one, the worm, who could, uh, the background story for that character was actually was able to just open up its chest just to release some eggs. So we could imagine different kind of lineups like that. And for example, we could imagine another one uh, also with morphing abilities where you could, uh, you could have a character like this one, a basic one, who might be able to generate some VFX. So you can have this character generating some smoke, some objects, some shapes, and silhouettes also. And to finish with that kind of lineup, we could imagine something a little bit more basic, where you could have a very basic character, biped, becoming something very totally different. And it's good to play with the contrast also. So for this example, you have a very basic character just becoming something totally different, like a geometric uh, shape or a geometric, uh, no, God, a squarey uh, shape. So now, I would like to show you uh, two different lineups just to, uh, oops, uh, that I managed to do thanks to that process. So for example, here is the first one. Uh, before showing all the different iteration uh, on that lineup, I would like to just talk about the background story because it's good to have some background story and I really used to do that a lot. So for example, at the beginning, I just wanted to play around with different kind of things because I love doing this kind of thing, just lose myself on something. But in this case, after a couple of hours, I just found it could be fun just to try to create creatures uh, with different kind of mechanics to carry eggs. So for this one, for example, it's kind of obvious. You can see the eggs on the arms. And so here you can see, oh, uh, yeah, sorry, I think, I think I missed something in my present. Sorry, give me two seconds because, oh, I can do that, sorry. So I talk about lineups here. I didn't uh, show you the, um, the process. So let me just show you the characters. And after that, I will show you the process I use to, uh, to come up with them. So just show you the second one. So now uh, you have another one with eggs on the ground. And for this one, it was very important for me to try to get something uh, even different with uh, you know, animation and motion. So I just try to change a little bit the anatomy to get something interesting at the end. Another one with a different mechanic also. So you can see, uh, see the eggs around the character floating around and the character floating also uh, from the ground. Next one, uh, more based on a tree. Uh, so you can see the egg just coming out of the ground and coming out of the character. And the last one, uh, more like a flower. So you can see the eggs at the center of the character and you have some flowers just floating around and you could imagine that it could be flowers trying to catch some insects to uh, feed himself or trying to get some sun just to get some energy from that. So you could have some different mechanics. So before going forward and showing you the process, I just would like to mention something very important actually when you work with lineup. So you can play with different shapes uh, in, uh, in gray like that, very simple way to just uh, see things. But it's very important also to work with colors because colors can have some impact on your final concept. So for example, if I go through the different characters now with the colors, you can see that they have all their own personality thanks to that as well. So you have different colors. For this one, for example, just for the background uh, story, not background story, but from this one, I just started from a pineapple to get something a little bit different. So fourth one and the last one. So now uh, let me just go through the process, which is very simple and basic actually, but it's something that could be very powerful. Oops. So it's very basic 
First thing I do actually to, to set up my scene is just to make a sphere. I, uh, I convert it in poly measures to make sure I can work on it in ZBrush. After that, I just uh, subdivide the sphere just to make sure to remove the wire effect that you can see on the surface. Then I convert it in DynaMesh and change the resolution just not to get too many polygons on screen to get things uh, smooth when I work on them. Next step is just to turn on the symmetry. Uh, it's very important to do it before just because you don't want to do it on all the spheres after that. So you turn on the symmetry first, then you duplicate the spheres, and you have your scene kind of set up. Then you just have to turn on the solo mode just because you don't want all the spheres to be displayed at the same time. And you just want the one you're going to work on. And the last step then, it's not the last step, but you can just start to play around with the shapes and volumes. Most of the time, I use a lot the snake hook uh, brush, which is very, uh, very useful for these kind of things. And after that, uh, the only one thing I do, uh, I can work on a sphere for a couple of hours. And when I get bored, I just have to use uh, the um, arrows on the keyboard just to be able to switch between the other spheres. So uh, it's very basic, but I suggest you that you try. It could be very powerful, actually just to, you know, to create. So I'll show you uh, one lineup, and now I would like to show you another one, which is a little bit more different, so uh, more with, uh, based on mechanical characters. And actually, the reason why I wanted to show that lineup is because for this specific one, I wanted to use another technique, just to, once again, avoid to get bored or try to explore different ways of creation. So for these specific uh, characters, I just decided to use something, once again, very basic in ZBrush. So let me go through the process for this one. So I set up the scene exact, the exact same way as uh, the previous lineup. And then the only one thing I did actually was to use a snake sphere brush, which is uh, in ZBrush by default. It's a very powerful brush. So what it does, actually, it allows you to just extrude some shapes from uh, an object or a primitive. So you just have to select the snake, uh, snake Sphere brush. After that, it's very important to turn on the Sculptris Pro, otherwise it's not going to work. And what I do after that is just I increase the subdivision size just to make sure I don't have too many polygons, once again, on screen in the brush to get things smooth when I create shapes. And then, and that is very personal, but for me, it's the best way to work and to get something interesting. Uh, I change the brush modifier value from 100 to 0. The difference is uh, when you keep 100, you paint by normal, and when you use 0 value, you paint by in-screen mode. So for example, for me, what I used to do is I take the right angle and use to paint something on the top of it to get some arms or, I don't know, different kind of fix or what you want. Uh, before going forward, I just would like to, to add, uh, to mention something else. It's that, for example, to get something thick or thin, so you just have to increase or decrease the size of your brush. So for example, this one was very, with a higher uh, brush, a higher size of the brush. And for this one, it was a, a lower size of the brush. So when you play with that, at the same time, you could have some very interesting result. So now uh, we are done with that. And I would like to go back to the uh, lineup process, a different kind of lineup process. Uh, we mentioned earlier that in a, in a lineup, you could have some very different characters. And it's good. You can balance all the characters together. So you could have some big one, small one, whatever. But it's also good to use that, to use that process uh, with a different base. So for example, you can imagine that you, you have a lineup and you want to make even more variation with one asset on that lineup. So you can also use that process to make even more variation. So let's illustrate a little bit more what I'm saying. Oh, uh, nope, nope, yeah. So, this is another lineup I did some while ago. And after a couple of weeks, I just wanted to get back. And I wanted to make some variation on one of them, the second one. 
So I just decided to change a little bit the pose to get something a little bit more natural. So I just uh, changed uh, the, the arms just to make them along the body and just decided to use it as a base and do many kind of variations from it. This is the result. God. So here is the base. So from that base, I managed to do one creature, uh, a little bit more realistic. So you can see that the silhouette is the same, but all the details are completely different. Uh, with the same base, I managed to do this one, another one, creature, with more stretchy kind of skin effect, a mechanical character with different kind of details, another uh, mechanical character with curvy shapes, a little bit more organic, a cartoony character, for those who know uh, Dragon Ball, it was based <laughs> on that. So uh, it's, there's, there are less details, but it just, you know, it's very bulky and it's there, so it's more cartoony. I also managed to do a stylized character, so you can see a head. Oh, you can do whatever you want. So for this one, there's a little bit more uh, details, uh, and you, you can see that we keep the bulkiness of the elements, actually. And the last one, which is a work in progress. Sorry, it's not done, because I, I got only just a month to do all of them. So I just, for this one, I wanted to do something a little bit more realistic. So the goal is to achieve a very high amount of, uh, of details and to get something interesting and fresh and new. So now uh, I would like to just to talk a little bit more about the process, how I did, uh, what I did actually to come up with that. So, oh, doesn't work. So, actually, what I did to come up with that was I just decided to work on three of them at the same time. But not to get bored, because actually I'm very someone who can get bored very easily and quickly. I just decided to work on three different kinds of style. So I just decided to work at the same time with a mechanical character, a creature, and a stylized character. A stylized character. So as you can see, uh, the base is exactly the same from all of them. D1. The D1 was just to focus only on the, the art direction. So for me, I just wanted to come up with something interesting. Not everywhere on the character. I didn't care at all at this stage. I just wanted to get something interesting. So as you can see, hands, feet are not done. Same here. So it's just the upper body. And same for this one. It's kind of rough. You can see things, but there are things that has to be done Stage two, D2 to D3, uh, the goal was just to extend the art direction on the entire character. So as you can see non, uh, now, feet and hands are done. Same here, the lower body is done. And same for this one, I just managed to do different kind of details everywhere. Last stage, D4 to uh, D7, it could be eight, depending on the complexity of your lineup. But the goal was to achieve something very final, close to be final. So it's something you can see now. So the, the work was just to try to polish a little bit more the plates and add a little bit of details using mostly alphas and masks. For this one, it was a little bit faster, just because usually when you do creatures, it's all about you know, using damn standard and pushing out uh, the details, the cavities, and stuff like that. And for the final level of details, it's just using some alphas. And for the last one, uh, which was the longer one, just because I just wanted things to be crisp and clean. So I spent a lot of time, not a lot of time, but I spent time just to separate all the pieces together and to be able to work on them individually to get a nice level of crispiness. So as you can see, um, this process can be very powerful, actually, just because in a short amount of time, you can have a lot of variations, which is very powerful when you talk about concept. So now, just to finish my, my part, I just would like to talk about very quickly about the process I used to polish 
that uh, elements on the character, which is a chest area. So, oops. No. Ah, OK, this one. So as uh, just to go through the process quickly, that was a base. I just decided to isolate uh, the chest element. Uh, first thing I've done was to divide the, the mesh, just to make sure I could use then the paint uh, brush just to uh, paint the cavities. The reason why I, I painted the cavities was to be able to use one very powerful feature in that brush, which is, oops, which is almost done. Yes, almost. Yeah, OK, good. The polygroup it. I really love that feature. It's something I use a lot. What it does, actually, it helps you to just separate all the elements together. So as you can see, it's kind of crappy here on the outline of the pieces. But the good thing is it brush is because there's many more very nice features. So to be able to smooth out a little bit the outlines, I just use the group loops features. The only one thing I changed actually was the G polish value. I put it to 10 just to not to, uh, to smooth out too much the inside of the element. Next step was just to remove the loops because I didn't want them. They were useless using the Daliden. Next step was just to, um, to add a level of um, realism. So for that, I just decided to add some thickness. Uh, the only, it was by default, so I used the panel loop for that. The only one thing I changed actually was the bevel value to 21. That allows me to get some very nice you know, bevel effect around the elements. That at the same time, it helps me, it helps me to just fill the, um, the gap between the different elements. Next step was to use the polish by features, which is very useful in concept, actually, because it helps you to just smoothed out a little bit uh, the polygroups and remove the artifacts. So it's very useful for that. Next step. Then I just decided to apply only one polygroup per elements. The reason why I decided to do that was because I wanted to be able to work on them individually. So just by hiding and hiding them, it's better to have only one polygroup. So I use auto group for that. Uh, that's a very quick uh, step because it was a, styles, a stylized character. I just wanted all the edges to be a little bit more smooth. So I just decided to apply a polish uh, just to smooth out a little bit the edges. And then I managed to work on the pieces individually uh, thanks to H polish clay smooth move brush. <laughs> and the last step was to, oh, sorry to add the final level of details using the standard brush to create some straight lines, uh, the mask just to be able to get some bumps, interesting bumps, uh, the insert brush, which is very powerful and useful to add um, more level of details on the, on the, on the, the element, uh, the standard brush just to use some alphas, which is also very powerful when you, in terms of conceptualization, because it's very easy and fast. And the last one, uh, which is a damn standard brush, uh, I used to change a little bit the lazy mouse value just to make sure that the lines are very you know, clean and crisp. And this is a result for this character after a couple of days. And I just would like to mention something uh, very quickly, uh, which is very powerful as well uh, to save time, it's to work in symmetry. So it's good sometimes to just uh, put some pieces at the center of your scene, work on them in symmetry mode, and then put them back. You can save a lot of time. So for example, the bicep element, the thigh element, the knee, and the feet were done that way. And this is it for me. So uh, now it's time to uh, Marco and Guillaume to take over. And I just would like to finish by saying that all the, if you're interested by the, the, the pictures, I can just share to everyone. Just to present the process. So, um, so yeah, Guillaume's gonna Guillaume's gonna set up uh, his uh, presentation. But like in the meantime, was there a, a question Oops, from sorry. someone maybe?
Oh, <laughs> square in the forehead. Sorry. All right? Did I hurt you? No, no, I'm good. You dropped that before, didn't you? No. Two for two yesterday. Well. Kidding, kidding, kidding. Um, Guillaume, uh, really beautiful work. My name is Rigel. Um, yes, right. I was just curious. This is more of a general artist question. Do you work a lot from reference, or do you just close your eyes and look at the back of your eyelids and kind of just move clay around? No, I have a lot of reference. Every time I have to build something, it's like um, I have to reverse engineer anything. If I have to do a car, then I'm going to have to learn a bit, basically, how something is built. Every piece of clothing, to a certain point, you don't want to push it to the extreme. but. I like to know how things work, uh, even if it's stylized, for sure. It's going to give a, a flavor, a, belie a believability to, the, to it. That's and so and I can say also that. Too, sorry, I, I got your name wrong. That's fine. That's Don't worry about <laughs> I, it. I, I, Don't even <laughs> say my last name. Nobody does. I, no, I, who, I didn't know who was speaking before, too. I was curious about but all of you. I'll give a, a trick at the same time is every time I do some. Uh, some type of shoes, I'll keep the reference. I'll make a montage of it, and I'll keep it for future reference. And it's something I build through the years. So every time now I start a project, I'll go through that bank before I even start looking for reference. It's super practical. Cool. It was Cedric. Cedric. Yeah. Yes. Just <laughs> saved your fro, man. Just saved your fro. Oh, Not going to lie. Was it for me? <laughs> Curly hair don't care. I don't know. Come on. It can let it rain, let it rain. <laughs> I'm <laughs> puffing out right here. That's for Cedric. Take care, Cedric. Nope. nope. Oh, what happened? What happened? No, he's uh, just saying that, like. Was uh, it for me, the question? Or was for it everybody. Their questions, they're just okay. throwing them out. They're floating around. It's like, you know what I mean? It's fine. Well, Rigel, we're going to Cedric, you know I mean? Cedric just told me he would have said the same. So you're Yeah, good. they're like, they're on a team. <laughs> they like, so funny. They're sharing, like, a, you know what I mean? They, yeah. Yeah. They're like a rock band. They're insane. I don't know the silhouette. It's quoi qui t'inspire, hein? Oh, gosh. So, uh, Cedric, for your final process, are you using um, subdivision levels or Z model or anything like that, or just uh, staying at high? Yeah, at some point at the end, just to add the extra level of detail that I use to subdivide everything. But it's not, yeah, just at the end to get something sharp, you know, uh, yeah. on screen. But yes, I do that at the end. Okay, cool. The box. <laughs> oh, hey. Getting your money's worth, I like that. I know. I'm huh? taking Rigel, too, I like I'm that. Taking advantage of this. Thumbs up. Cedric. Cedric. This is for you. Um, when you were talking about those three concepts you were doing, you had like the eyeball one, the stylized one, and the Mobile armored one. Why did you choose those Mobile out of the seven? Oh, it's it's about concept. Oh, cool. You were just you were going through the seven different like designs. You went with that body type. The like heavy body type, you ended up going with the three. The armored one, the organic eyeball looking one, and the stylized character. Why did you choose those three versus the other ones? I don't know. There's no reason for that. I just. <laughs> it's chaos. Yeah, it's part of our name. I, I don't know. I, I just felt comfortable to work on them just because I did a bunch of them a long time ago. I, I love doing uh, mechanical character, I love doing stylized character, and creatures are just fun. The reason why actually I used to work on these both free is just because you know a mechanical character it's a lot of energy, and I just I knew that at some point I would get bored, so I just decided to do a creature at the same time because creature it's very very easy, so uh, it's just kind of finding the best balance just when you work on different characters at the same time, so it's probably the reason, the secret reason. Keep it up, too. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, uh, we'll go on. I can start. Can you hear me? Of course. You got a so nice my voice, name? man. It's good. <laughs> yeah. It's a good what? voice. Huh? A good voice. What are you saying? You have, you have a voice. nice voice. Oh, thank you. Yeah, listen to that. Uh, so my, Guillaume, my name is Guillaume Tiberguet. I'll try not to answer other people's questions for now. <laughs> uh, so it's really nice to meet you all, finally. Uh, I've been friends with Marco and Cedric for a long time now. We met at uh, IDAS Montreal. I was really surprised and humbled when you guys uh, wanted me to join because uh, I do very different things and uh, you guys are freaking legends. Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It costs us only $20. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's cheap. <laughs> uh, so I'm working on 
with uh, Epic on Fortnite for more than a year now with a great team. So shout out to them and my, uh, shout out to them. They're working really hard. I love you guys. Um, <laughs> so like Cedric and Marco, I adopted 100% uh, ZBrush pipeline a long time ago. Thanks to Frédéric Daou, who was a yeah. friend of us. Uh, and it, it really widened my scope. I used to do everything uh, the old school way. And since then, everything has improved. And the scope of everything we can do has, uh, has, got, has gotten better with uh, every update. Um, so I prepared a project to show you guys. I'll start a character that's stylized from scratch. Um, I'll try to sparkle in some uh, artistic reasoning uh, and decisions I took through it. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, Usually, I'll, I, I don't work from uh, personal ideas. I work on uh, friends' concepts. Uh, it's just an excuse to work with really cool people. Uh, and I always, uh, I always get something out of it because uh, of their interest. So uh, here's the concept. So uh, this is Gretel from Ansel and Gretel. It's made by a friend of mine uh, called Wu Liu. Uh, I worked with him in uh, Palo Alto. So, Please check his work out. It's, uh, it's really dynamic. There's strong shapes. Um, and uh, he's a good friend of mine. Um, so uh, it's based on, uh, it's, it's based on uh, the fairy tale. So uh, I'll assume that most of you know that fairy tale. It's pretty dark. Um, <laughs> you know, child abuse and uh, <laughs> poverty and... Uh, no starvation, like stuff. So even though it's happy, uh, I'm gonna try to imbue some of those tones uh, through the process, through uh, the use of color and tone and value. Um, so I'll do some research, I'll gather some re research, and I'll, I'll try to understand the artistic direction. Um, so usually I'll talk with an art director or a concept artist uh, to uh, make up a story about it. Uh, to ground it in my mind. So if I look at it, uh, her hair is unruly, so it shows her wild nature. Um, uh, this, uh, this candy she has, I would guess, uh, stole from the gingerbread house, so it's mystical and it's glowing. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty intense. Um, she's from a woodworker family in detail, so she's very simple. Um, and I can say something interesting is, you see those embroidery, uh, we decided to take out in the end because uh, it felt too, uh, it felt too deep, it felt too visually detailed for what it was. And also, uh, she wouldn't wear something like this. She's too poor for that. Um, and then the bag, the bag is, I, I guess, what she used uh, to hide the breadcrumbs to find her way back home. Uh, what else? Yeah, that's it. So uh, first, I'm going to say it's very rare that we get to start from a base body. Uh, we, we get to start from scratch in production. Usually, you start with the base body. But I think it's always uh, good practice to start from scratch. It's, it's pretty cool to know that you can start from nothing and build something. And, a good thing about not starting from a base body is you won't get influenced by the underlying anatomy. As much as you think you won't, you kind of will kind of keep those shapes. And if you really want to go crazy and specific, you can start from, uh, from scratch. So I'll stop rambling. I'll, I'll open ZBrush from here. Um, so uh, this is basically what I'm going to start uh, from these three primitives, they're directly from ZBrush, uh, and they have a nice diversity of shape. Um, from here, I'll build a base body. So I'll look at something, let's take the head or the torso. I'll try to simplify us to uh, <coughs> the simplest geometrical form, and I'll start uh, building things bit by bit. You see, it's completely different from what you're doing, Cedric, so to each his own. <laughs> That's, it's really interesting to see how people work. Um, even though um, this, most of it will be hidden, uh, I still am going to work on it because it's the, it's the base structure on everything, and everything's going to fall uh, on that main structure. Uh, you see the deltoids, you see the 
the torso. It's a bit like if it was a wood mannequin. Uh, and in the same idea, I'll build everything else. Uh, it's not supposed to be pretty at this point. It's, we're just placing things. We're just uh, working on the relationship between forms. Uh, through this, I'll make sure to zoom out a lot to make sure that everything works together. And also something some people don't tell you, I'll look at it from weird angle, angles, from the top or from the bottom or from the side, making sure it reads real, really well. So uh, here's a progress. So the ID, I want to um, keep clear planes, directional planes of the form. And slowly by little, I'll chip it in like if it was clay or rock and I'll, I'll start to define the shapes uh, little by little. Uh, excuse me. So you see the vest? Like basically I just carved it in. I, I just am looking for the shape right now. Um, this is the hand. Uh, a bit like what you were saying, when I work on something complex, I'll work on it in the center of the universe uh, for ease of, uh, ease of use. Because if you work on a hand and it's angled in the universe, you'll have a hard time like try to find your straight lines. So I work on it in the center, and then I'll go and place it on the character. Um, something cool about working like this is you can work on only one finger, and then poop, 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 you copy it, and uh, you have a hand. Uh, even though it's an organic shape for the ones who know, I like to keep uh, the power of creases so I have my nice uh, change of directions in the form. Okay, so let's say I, I, I do this for every part of the character. I'll, I'll show you how I, um, I'll get a nice topology out of it. So here's the leg. The leg has, bis has been built, like I explained, out of different subtools. From here, I'll dynamesh it together. And then, with the power of Z remesh, I have a leg like I can build on. It's pretty cool. And uh, I think Z remesher got really, really good in the last update. And uh, it's a joy to work with. Yeah. So imagine that I do this for every, car every parts. That's why I end up with. You can see even for the, the face, I got a topology that's pretty good to just sculpt on. It, it won't be used for low poly, but for sculpting, it's pretty cool. Uh, you can also see that I creased my edges to make sure that when I'll subdivide, those things uh, will remain straight. Uh, here's an example. Uh, I always try to keep my forms, my silhouettes, uh, reading well, and uh, uh, that there's a relationship between each other. You see the knot here, everything goes well into each other. And uh, this, in the end, will create that nice little contact shadow that will give it a bit of realism and believability. Uh, some trick aside, if I open this, you see that I kept my edges instead of keeping it True, uh, it might be overkill, but I try to save polygons when I can because when you have different subtools, at some point it gets heavy. And what I'm looking for is ease of working. I just want the, to keep the flow of it. Uh, okay. And by the way, I, I uh, decimated everything just for ease of, uh, of use. Uh, this is the final character uh, in T-Pose. Uh, I was laughing because I don't usually do colors, so I'm good. The thing why I, I'm not doing colors, I'll do, co I'll do colors at the end, but at this point, I don't want colors to uh, speak for themselves. I want to make sure that the character, the modeling is really, really tight before I even uh, start adding colors. Uh, I, it's attached right now, but I think sometimes I put a, a darker values on the eyelashes and maybe the pupil, just to sell the character, just to give it a bit of personality. So, like I said, it has to read well from every angle. Um, where am I? 
So, yeah, you see all those frills? That was some storytelling about, uh, about disheveled uh, and used her, her dresses. I'll simply use some um, cylinders and I'll copy them. And when I get enough variety, uh, I'll just create a brush out of it and then I'll, I'll add them up to, uh, to every aspect. So that's pretty efficient and it goes really, really fast. Uh, what else? Something cool I, w I wouldn't do before is I, uh, I was picturing uh, translucency on the, on the candy part. So uh, I modeled the candy uh, to have an inside. Uh, so I made a Boolean, I made a copy of the stick and I made a Boolean out of the, the, the candy so it would fit perfectly with it. With this, I'll be able to create a thickness map later when I'm texturing and do a lot of fun stuff in the shaders. Uh, you know, something was missing about the characters fr from the back at some point that wasn't in the concept, so I, I tried to uh, do a bit of concepting myself, so I added a hoop skirt and uh, bloomers to her. So um, I think they fit pretty well with uh, the time period and the style. Uh, and I, so I can say that um, you see the way it, it, uh, it goes around the knees. It's a nice visual, uh, it's a nice visual echoing of uh, the shoulders. So it, I felt that it worked well. Uh, I decided to do this late in the game and it's pretty easy. I just took the legs, I masked it out and then I extracted this. I extracted the mesh out of this. So I, I already had the, the form of the leg. Um, that's right. So, um, if I was in production, it would end in typos. Uh, personally, I think something cruel about uh, the character artist's job is that we try to invoke, uh, we try to invoke an, evo uh, an emotion out of a character that's in typos and as insanely good as it can be, it will never really tell you anything. So for my personal projects, I sp I'm spend more and more a lot of time and effort into posing the character. Um, so I'm a measure twice, cut once kind of artist, uh, if you didn't see it already. So instead of posing the character right away, I'll use a mannequin. Uh, so this is a Ryan King's line eight head uh, mannequin. You might not even know mannequins exist because they're pretty far. So let me show you where they are. They're in Spotlight, in Project, and in... Uh... Oh, sorry. <laughs> in Mannequin here. So there's a lot of stuff here that's super interesting. I mean, I'll talk, I'll talk to you after. <laughs> Uh, so, working on the mannequin, uh, you'll make your mistakes and your experimentations right away before even touching the model, which I think is really cool. It saves you time in the end. Uh, so, with this, I pose the character. It's pretty straightforward, but it's a long process. Can I? There we go. So, what was important was to... Uh, do I have it here? I wanted, I wanted her to detach the silhouette, but also, uh, also the, the area around her would tell a story. Um, so you see that everything, everything like under her armpits is opened up. Uh, I will always like look at the model in a different angle I wouldn't usually. And I'll, in Photoshop, usually I will simplify. Simplify, simplify, simplify. And something important is contraposto. So it's the way the body uh, finds balance and imbalance. You can see from the front, the way she leans her, her head compared to her shoulders, compared to her hips, you can see it uh, from the back also. Um, so from here, I'm going to take uh, that character in another software to texture it and rent, uh, Texture in and render it. But before that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use uh, ZBrush to uh, do my poly paint to make sure to, uh, to have nice areas of effect uh, for my elements. So, where am I? Uh, 
So when I look at the character, I'll look at it and I'll, I'll think, okay, what is cotton? What is skin? What is hair? What is leather? And is I'll make a list and assign it to a color. Here's my list. Uh, you can do the same. Uh, if you do the same, make sure that uh, your colors are very different from each other or they're going to blend in uh, when you do selection. That's a production trick, so uh, we always use that trick. Uh, and let me show you what it looks like. So s simply when I have that, that, that square thing, I'll plug it in texture and then I'll, I'll color pick it. Um, and hear what it looks like. It's not about colors that fit. It's just, it's just you have to think about it. Um, there you go. Uh, and from here, let me show you the final result. So this is Gretel. Um, listen, it's, it's a bit far from the, from the concept. There's a lot more realism in it. Uh, I don't know about you if you're doing uh, stylized, but I'll always add a bit of anatomy in there, and then I'll have to scale back and simplify and simplify. So uh, simple is hard. Simple is really hard. Um, something you haven't seen in the ZBrush is uh, her head, her, high, her eyes. There's a sclera mesh, which is uh, the sphere copied with a, a bulge at the iris. And here, it's, uh, it's transparent, but it, it will uh, highlight uh, the eyes. And that's what is going to give her li life, really. Um, OK, you see that all the stitches, the fabrics, and the details, I did uh, outside the ZBrush uh, in texture with depth. You can totally do this in, 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 uh, in ZBrush, and it's probably going to look better. But uh, I, like, I like the iterative aspect of it, of adding things and bringing things in and out. Uh, something else I changed from the concept is I, I had a, a green background uh, just to, uh, to uh, ground her and the forest of the tail. Um, do I have anything else to say? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so in the end, uh, uh, because of the color, the value, the, the fact that she's very bright and saturated and the background is darker, I just wanted to evoke uh, the resilience of children in uh, the dark uh, world of uh, adults and parents. So I hope you got something fun out of this. And uh, if you have questions, come and see me. We'll, we'll totally nerd out. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Guilhem, good job. Can we get a sneak in a couple of questions here before? Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Let's do that before the ploof. We're actually really good with time. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. Tick tock. Huh? <laughs> She's over there. We speak later. We do a photo op. Anybody? How's everybody doing? I'm not so convinced. It's Saturday. Come on. How are you doing? <laughs> That's Is that cool. a question there? Bam, what a catch. Oh. See that? Uh, other side, turn around, turn around, turn it, turn it around. There it is. Okay. It's not working? Oh, geez. Okay, try now. Squeeze it? Yeah. There we go. Hey, there, it worked. There we go. Let's squeeze. Yeah. Would you explain, would you um, expand more on your technique regarding um, identifying textures oh, using sure. that paint technique? That's something I haven't seen very much of. That was me. The last technique you used to identify your textures. Yeah. Would you <laughs> expand upon that a little bit more? Uh, so to me, the most important thing first is value. So it's your amount of, uh, it's your range of white to black. So you try to stay away from complete blacks and complete whites. Uh, and. Uh, and I'll look at my character, I'll look at the color, but from time to time, I'll look at it in grayscale to make sure that it reads well, to make sure that uh, where your biggest contrasts are, are uh, where you want to bring the attention, which is usually the face. And from there, I'll build uh, my colors, and then I'll think of my materials the way they reflect light. 
And uh, something fun about that character is I wanted to get into materials, so there's a lot of SSS in there. There's opacity, there's, uh, there's uh, emissives. Uh, does that answer your question? You're my new best friend. <laughs> Quick question. Um, so after you are done Z remeshing, yeah. all the primitives over here, <laughs> uh, do you actually go through and crease things again, or is the creasing just for the initial like primitive blocking? Uh, I'm not sure I follow the question. So from say that so you, again. So you block in the primitives with creasing, yeah. and then you Z remesh the whole piece. That's right. Do you go back in and crease anything, or do you just kind of start sculpting? I don't. So what you saw at the end was when I was happy about the whole. Uh, the whole topology, I, I did not have to. But you see that at some point, if it's pinching, you're not going to fight it. So you're probably just zero mesh it for sure. Mm -hmm. Don't forget your guides. Is that you with a hand up? Is that a hand? What a toss, almost threw the guy out of the chair. See what I did there? Holy smoke, almost knocked you out. OK, target of the box. Right into the box. Hold uh, it right near your face. Um, up, up, up. Put it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> my, my name is Freddy Sace. Um, nice to meet you. I was noticed uh, uh, I didn't quite get like your posing technique. I'm a high low poly guy where, you know, you rig it and you pose it. Um, I noticed uh, how do you set up your rig once you after your T pose for it's for print. Or is it a is it question. for like this for kid. film only? Uh, well, I don't do print. You're think, making me think about something. Um, I Did don't. Did I just hit up the wrong guy? Is that what this is? It's okay. Don't be ashamed. It's not your fault. I, I don't do fancy. It's me. I, it's not you. Yeah, I don't do fancy rigs. Like really. Hey, so it's not what my I fault. can say is what you've seen. Uh, some, you know, posing a character is not about transposing it and then it's done. You're gonna break some stuff. You're gonna stretch some stuff. You're gonna have to re-sculpt a lot of things. That's why I say it's a lot of work. But if your knowledge is in too fancy rigs, then you, I'm sure you don't have to do as much work as I do. It's all right. Yeah, he's saying it's all right. He's giving you the thumbs up back here. Is that a thumb up? Is that a thumb up? You want some of that? Yeah, give me a thumb up right there. Oh, look at this guy. Holy smoke. Where have you been all my life? I like this guy's energy. Hey, you want some of that, he says. Nice, on a sinful Saturday. We'll get some of that later. You better be street side. Okay, where are we at? Somebody else. One more, and that's the last one. Then we take it no, off, right? We can take okay. another question, actually. We're yeah, uh, yeah? on time. Yeah. Okay, we got the ploof saying it's okay for one more. Anybody else? Well, don't, don't hesitate. Get, get off them hands. Oh! You know, when I was a kid, I could really throw a baseball. <laughs> yeah, I was... Should have been born in Texas. Hello? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Ryan. my name's Jason. Um, poster of him in my room I was just curious, uh, where did you end up rendering that at, and uh, how did you do your textures for that? Huh. Can, can I say it, Louis? Well, let me come and talk to you Am first. I allowed I mean, what are we to doing say here? where Hang I textured it? It's more reset. Let me look at the I killed someone. Good, yeah, of course. Tell them where you did it. <laughs> So I textured it. Cherry is uh, caring, man. I textured it in Substance Painter, and I, I rendered it in uh, Marmoset. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. It's, it's, you know, we're not the only tool used in the world. We know this. It's OK. <laughs> you know, <laughs> make me feel like I'm dipping my toes in the holy water, for Pete's sake. <laughs> I'm the only person to drive a car up to the Parthenon in Rome. They're looking at me going, you can't drive here, man. <laughs> what? It's, it's a Fiat. It's fine. Chat, don't come east. Okay, so uh, is that it? One more? Um, How do you feel? Yeah, one more. Uh, How you feeling? Woo! Yeah, yeah, you see, you give them a few answers, they feel a little better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see how it is. <laughs> one last one, and then no? Yes, no? Yes, no? You're being shy. Okay, shy. Take it away, Mark. All right. Um, okay, sit there. No questions now, huh? It's all good, it's all good. Is my mic working? Yeah. Am I good? Yeah. Can you hear me? I think so. Yeah. Everybody can hear me well? Yeah, uh, so. can I we up the gain uh, on it? Push it. Well, I mean, you can up the gain also. It's good. Oh, okay. The gain, the volume. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an electric guitar. More gain, dudes. Always. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right. 
So uh, yeah, Ooh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, since uh, Cedric was uh, presenting a lot about the um, uh, concept, and uh, Guillaume is more inclined with like production. Plus, also we've been touching a couple of different styles. So I'm gonna go more into like the uh, like uh, in quotes realistic and also hard surface, of course, because I mean that's pretty much what always people ask me. <laughs> um, so I did this uh, this piece for um, for a sideshow. It was a uh, the Sentinel, actually this one. Sorry, sorry. It was uh, the Sentinel, and it was actually used to to make like a base for uh, the uh, the Wolverine. Uh, uh, what's their name again? Premium. Yeah. Uh, the uh, yeah yeah there, it's really nice yeah, exactly Wolverine's uh, Raphael did it actually so it's kind of funny he's coming like right after yeah uh, and uh, I think Will Arbottle did the the um, Magneto actually and, and this like piece was actually completely like ravaged and destroyed afterwards but it's kind of fun because with Sideshow I actually was able to work on uh, concepting the uh, the head and also. Uh, making it like a production ready, so uh, print ready, or as much print ready as like I can, because there's a lot of people in the process afterwards, right? So, um, uh, so we worked on the uh, on the uh, full character at first. Uh, so this is like the complete character, and it was not necessarily like approved or anything. Uh, we, I, we just wanted to have like kind of like the full character before we like focus on the parts we wanted to model. Uh, so it's not like necessarily like certified or approved by Sideshow, right? It was just like a work in progress. And uh, we decided to focus on the head and on the, the arm. But it's just to show you like a little quick, like my presentation is not about concept, but I just wanted to show that like, I like to practice concept as well. And like when I'm given the opportunity, it's pretty fun. So like this whole character was pretty much done on a, like on one, uh, starting from like a human base mesh. Uh, did like on one asset, maybe some are separated. <laughs> yeah, I know it's like, like he's starting from like just like crazy spheres or whatever, and like him from like primitive, and I'm the one that starts from a base mesh. So we have a company together, but we do like nothing the same way, <laughs> and we don't agree ever. Also, <laughs> that's how you run a company. <laughs> so uh, yeah, exactly. I, I just like wanted to do like a quick uh, little character here, um, uh, just to give you an idea. It pretty much like took me like a day for the character, uh, just to have it like in concept, but I just used like shortcuts to get to there. Well, what I mean by shortcut is everything is done like by hand, and it's uh, often what I find that some people have the most difficulty with. It's gaining this like uh, dexterity to do something that looks hard surface without necessarily using like crazy techniques. And uh, this is pretty much what I'm going to try to talk about for uh, the remaining of the presentation. Um, so uh, if we look at the uh, finished character. So the finished character was basically built on top of the uh, of the uh, this blocking here, and uh, what's interesting about this uh, this piece, why I'm showing you this one, it's because there's like cl three clear techniques that I use all the time, and for this character I've used them all, uh, so I can use it as a good example. Um, so the three the three techniques that I that I talk about, I name them uh, the quick the uh, the quick the clean and the classic, classical. Yeah, it has a good, a good. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, it could. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, so uh, the quick technique, the idea is basically just to be able to go as fast as possible to get something that kind of looks polished or enough. Uh, the clean technique is the one that takes more time. It's more technical, but you you're more guaranteed to have something that looks. Uh, that looks uh, good in the end. And the classic is basically just talking about going back to poly modeling, like we, we, we like pre-ZBrush and such. So I'm talking about Z modeler, in other words. Um, if I look at uh, like uh, some pieces here, uh, you'll see that, for example, like this piece, this one here, is uh, what I consider the quick one, right? So it's really important for it to look finished and to look clean anyway, right? But I haven't really used any like fancy techniques or whatever. I just took like a, a block and I chiseled it and I made sure it was like all like the planes are all clean and such, then adding mid detail and adding smaller detail just to make it look finished. Uh, whereas a piece like, uh, for example, like the faceplate here, uh, this one was actually, uh, first of all, it was cut out of the model. 
the same way that like Cedric showed with like you know the black line and having it like become a poly group and then you can actually extract it. That's pretty much the exact technique. And for people that have been following our tutorial, we've been talking about that for like five years now. So like the whole panel loop technique, that's pretty much like the, the foundation of, uh, of uh, the clean technique that I'm talking about. But th what's interesting is that the, um, the quick technique, which is, like I said, more like the dexterity part, they're using brushes and the chiseling surfaces and everything, it has to be applied on the model once it's actually um, it's panel looped and it looks like the base looks clean. You still have to use like the techniques from before, right? So that's why even if I divide them in three groups, they're basically like all interconnected in a sense. And um, the third technique is when I say classic, I'm just talking about like creating like stuff like this. Like it's it's pretty much uh, just a uh, like a like a cylinder that I kind of like change the shape. Or I actually know this one where I just used like stuff that I found like in IMMs that were in ZBrush, and I just like Frankenstein them to actually look. A bit different and to have it look a certain way. But I would take, for example, like I think this one I made by hand. This was basically like a sphere that I just used at Modeler to just like add some like little detail and such and creases. I, I'm actually able to use uh, dynamic subdivision with that, uh, that technique. Uh, so it, it actually makes the scene like way less at the end. So you got those three techniques. And also, uh, in the middle, the middle piece, since it was uh, something that was going to be printed, I knew that there was a, like, it cannot be like a hollow piece. It needs to have like, a, like an inside, and pieces needs to be actually glued, be glued on it, in a sense. So there, there cannot be like any like, uh, like empty space or, like, like I said, hollowness. Um, so when I actually worked on the concept, piece by piece, I just like removed them from the concept. And I actually uh, created like a new subtool, and the the like the hole that it left, you can just like close hole and like push it like inside of the inside of the piece. This is basically like how uh, I was able to get this uh, subtool in the end that just acts as like the center of everything, but everything on top. So everything that's not like yellow right now is basically either like an EMM or something that I like Z modeled, like the eye, or a plate that's on top, like this plate or this plate, or some object that are less like plate-like. It's gonna be like this one here, which is basically just like a like a shape, like this. I probably started from a cube or I don't know, and uh, I just um, uh, polished it with uh, like brushes or whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll go deeper into that. But everything on this model, that's what it is. So um, the reason why I think those three techniques are important, it's really a matter of efficiency. Uh, I find that efficiency is one of the most important things when, uh, when you work for a client and you have to respect deadlines, but you also have to respect your own life and like, have a life outside of work. And the way that I've been able to, to gain enough speed to be able to do so much work but still have time to play by Borderlands Dark 3 Souls. right now, or Dark Souls again, 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 and again. Uh, it's because, <laughs> or, or, or have spent time with my girlfriend also, right? <laughs> exactly, and then with my dog, and I love them. Hi. So, um, <laughs> and I'll say hi mom and hi dad also. <laughs> so the, um, uh, the, the, the reason why I'm actually, I have time to do those things is because like, I've been able to really practice on uh, going fast, but going smart. And this is pretty much just going smart. That's the most important thing. Uh, sometimes I find that some people maybe they don't, they don't think before before they uh, they start working, and they might actually just like double the time that it takes to actually get there. And but to know how to get there, it's pretty much just like practice. But not only practice and practicing without thinking about it, but practicing as in like how do you think? How, after you're done with your piece, you go over it and you're like, okay, so maybe I could have done that like faster by just doing it like maybe like dirtier because it, it, I don't even like notice all the work that I did. So this work is like completely useless to the goal that I wanted to achieve. And by that, uh, I mean like for example, when you work on a character, maybe like the head, the hands, the upper chest is gonna be like the parts where you wanna put the most work with, but like, like the feet and the legs, like often I'll kind of like do it like half-ass and nobody notices. 
because nobody looks there. So except if there was so, something super important on the legs and you knew that like, maybe like the camera would go there often, yeah, maybe you do take more time, right? But you really have to like, work smart. So you have to know like, the scope of what you're working on and such and such. When you work on personal, uh, your personal work, it's easy because you kind of like, decide uh, what is important and what is not uh, important and when you're going to render in the end and maybe zoom in and out. So, uh, like for example, like I did a couple of like my Mega Man characters recently and like none of them have like a backside except uh, the near one and I think the first one also. But like there's like a lot of characters. I was like, hey, I'm never going to show the back, so why work on it? Like I just want to do like a character that looks fun and get over it. So efficiency, just really try to like, think what's necessary before you start working on your character. Um, in the case of this character, pretty much, pretty much everything was, uh, was important uh, since it could be viewed in 360 because it was printed in 3D. So it's like, like the person that's looking at it is going to decide what's import, uh, what he wants to look at and it can be everything. So everything had to be like polished and stuff. Um, so, uh, oh yes, yeah, something that's also interesting is if you're actually uh, smart and efficient, uh, for people that are <laughs> for people that are concept artists it's actually right in your lane because you don't want to spend too much time like polishing anything right you just want to get like a shape so you have the perspective and then you can actually go and like do your like uh, your paint over and uh, that sort of stuff so it's it's good to know the techniques that will make you fast and the technique that will make you do something that looks clean even if it takes more time so that being said um, i'm going to take a piece of the character and I'm going to actually uh, go from, uh, from the concept that I have here, and I'm going to bring it to uh, something that will look uh, polished. So I'm going to take this piece right here. And like I said, I, um, it's calculated that I actually took the piece that I don't have to do the panel loop, because a panel loop is very like technical in a sense, right? Uh, but what I find is important is uh, more like the mentality behind polishing a surface. So your panel loop's gonna get you your shape, your panel, and then you have to make sure like the surface looks clean and such. And for that, we're gonna use this piece here. So I'm just gonna make myself comfortable. So here, I don't have to break, uh, to break it apart, to, to break the shape out of the character because it's, uh, it was already, uh, like appended as like its own uh, uh, poly group and uh, sub tool, but like if I if I had to, I would probably like if I had to like polish like maybe like this piece here, I probably have to like to mask it out uh, and be able to actually like break it into like its own piece. So uh, by masking, just a little quick trick. Uh, I love to give, give little quick little tricks. Uh, if you use the uh, brush depth here and you say it to not go like so low, you'll you'll pretty much be able to like mask it like this. And you see, it's not, even if I'm ra my radius is bigger, it's not going lower, like it's not going here. So it's actually like, in the, in the idea of being efficient, it's just a quick little trick that like I know that just makes me go faster. And you see, without being really like careful, I get to actually like uh, mask the entire character. So I could break it out like this. I could do the uh, um, poly paint the edges and extract it like Cedric showed, uh, there are many techniques at your disposition. But since this, since this one is already like its own, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it, I'm going to hide it, and do split hidden. And I will be using my shortcut because it's still in the subject of efficiency. All my shortcuts are working the same way that like you play like FPS. It's all in like those keys with like mixes of like control shift and alt. And I strongly suggest that after you're done like exploring with the software, you create your own like way of working like this. And every time you cut in like milliseconds, in the end, you uh, maybe spent like a day less on your uh, character, maybe two days even. So I'm gonna remove the symmetry because it's just gonna help me work better. And this is like the piece that I'm gonna start from to actually, uh, to actually do my polishing. Um, where's the other pen? This one, like the, the button is kind of like wonky. All right. Yeah, that's good. All right, okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is like, I have this piece here. I'm basically gonna reuse the same uh, shapes, but the the, what I wanna do is start by removing any kind of like detail. I wanna go back to like a pure shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically just going to clay build up or clay uh, the holes here, just to actually fill them. 
and I don't even need to be clean because I'm going to smooth them afterwards, but I, I, I'm not going to get anywhere if I don't get rid of those like details that are in the way. I'll just do them like just in one shot, but clean on top of a, a clean surface. So once you fill the holes, you can basically just like use your smooth brush. Just make sure to don't hit, hit the sides to, to do something like this, but you can just like smooth it out. Also, you'll, you'll see I'm pretty much going to concentrate only on like one view um, because like doing like the backside could take a little bit, bit of time, but it will be like the same thing applied everywhere. So I have like all my shapes here. Uh, if I actually find that I'm losing like uh, I'm losing some um, some uh, crispiness, I'm actually just going to insist on like what the planes should be. And when I actually have this at this point, I can pretty much just take my H polish. I'm going to start like just like simplifying the planes and making them look clean. Uh, it's important to use Alt when you use H polish sometimes because, for example, like this is actually this is really important. Uh, if you actually have this site, this piece here, and you try to polish it, uh, sometimes like you're kind of like destroying like the thing that's right next to it, and it's not that much of a big deal because you can go back and just like clean it up. There you go. But uh, if you experiment with Alt. You'll know, like, you, you, at some point, you'll start to like understand its behavior, and you'll see that, like, sometimes you destroy less of what's like beside uh, the shape if you uh, like just test with this, the Alt button and like know its behavior correctly. Um, so exactly, like, I'm just trying to get something that looks like somewhat um, clean in terms of like the general shapes. I could even um, use uh, the clip curve in some like areas like this. The backside, since we're it's not the, we're, we don't really care for the the backside right now, uh, I'm not gonna work on it like I said. But I'll just make sure that at least like the silhouette of it is uh, like tolerable. All right. And this is uh, the first pass. This is basically just like cleaning up the details and having the shapes uh, back to uh, something that's workable. At this point, what I'm going to try, what, what I'm going to want to do, since I know the shape is not really going to change anymore, the shape, I'm going to create. Um, actually, I'm going to work on clone here. I'm going to do a Z remesh just to have like a cleaner, uh, a cleaner base to start to go from. I find that it's like it creates less like artifacts to use on Z uh, use Z remesh than Dynamesh, but sometimes I just use Dynamesh because I get lazy. Um, all right, so um, what? Games minute. What? All right, so, so, so no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry. So at this point, I, I could actually reproject my details, but I still have uh, something that's. Um, I still have like something that is close enough to my shapes, and I know that I can get my shapes back simply by like re h polishing uh, it, because I didn't spend much time trying to polish it, so it's not really I'm not really losing any work. But like right now, starting from here, I can actually uh, really focus on having like those shapes clean, and it, it feels like I'm really early in the work still. But the reality the reality is that this step is so important. Um, that I'm going to spend like more time making sure that everything looks clean before I actually go on and do like the final passes, which will be the middle detail and smaller detail. So by using Alt, I get this. Uh, I'm just going to make sure everything looks sharper since I kind of like lost it. All right. OK. So I'll stop here for the moment. But I'll show you like what's the uh, the next like the next step. Uh, what I'll want, I want I'm going to want to do is like take care of a couple of lines that are starting to get crooked because of uh, the way that I work. So what I do is I often just go take my move brush, and uh, Furio showed me this little button here that was uh, actually I found pretty useful. It's Accu Curve, and I use it like you see like on and off, and it's just like a way to like like 
when you pull like on something, it becomes like more like spiky. So if it's not uh, accu curve, you'll see it's going to be rounder. And I actually use accu curve and no accu curve basically to just like start and make sure that like all my lines are like more parallel to each other, because like this is something. It's not about the surface. The cleanness of the surface is really about like the the um, the um, well the cleanness of the line itself. And let's say that like I find that this is like it's enough parallel for my taste. I'm going to uh, go back to H polish and pretty much like finish uh, do like the finish pass for like the clean surfacing. Okay. So one way to make sure that your surface is clean is to uh, use the metal uh, render like this. You see, there's like a dip in the shape right here. And uh, here, it's also not super clean. But at this point, I can pretty much just like use like smooth to just try to get like those artifacts out. This I'm going to need to make the radius like bigger. Because like my my hand um, my strokes are actually getting like too visible, but you see at this point like this, it's like it's okay. Like there's like a dip here. I think I can probably fix it. It's probably because like these lines are not super parallel that you feel a dip here. But it's just a matter of like just CH polish out like this. You see it got already like sharper, and I won't overdo it right because. Uh, I just need to make sure that it looks like respectable. And uh, if you look at my work uh, closely, you'll see that sometimes like I leave things like pretty dirty, but you don't end up like really noticing it because uh, there's so much other things to focus on. See, like I'm just trying too much now. Okay. So the next step afterwards is going to make sure that like all your corners are uh, homogeneous, okay? Because uh, one thing, one thing that can get problematic is if you have like sharp edges and then like round edges, like this is getting pretty round. You want things to be like everything to be like somewhat similar. So, and I'm really just going to use like the smooth brush to just like see if I want this like a little bit rounder. Maybe this one here, like this one here is getting a bit sharp, too sharp. So I could. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. Okay, that's funny. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so you see, like this for me, I find it like clean enough. I'll actually go back to a material that's less shiny. And uh, what I, I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to apply the, um, the middle details. So like for the mid details, I'm basically just going to use like mostly masks like this. Like the strength of my mask is crazy right now. I don't know why. It got like this. <laughs> Can you see? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. I'm going to remove my depth mask here. But technically, the, uh, the mask, there's like so many techniques to do that. And it's uh, like what I like to do most of the time is uh, I just like create like a mask that looks somewhat clean. I'm going to blur it and sharpen it. So that like the edges are like fine, and I'm going to reverse it and control click in this, and this is smoothing it on, only on one side. Once I have this, I can actually just like move my piece like this, move my piece around. I can even like change like its shape. I didn't mask the other side, but like if I actually masked it correctly, I could have like just created like a like a dent here like this. Actually, I'm gonna do it because it, it's it's kind of weird to just <laughs> say something and not do it. Yeah. So you push it like this. You can like change its, si its size, and you can pretty much like have something that looks like this. Then other sm other uh, um, mid details, I'm going to actually use like uh, like brushes like Orb Crack or uh, Jesus, it's uh, yeah. Orb Crack, and I'm gonna use a, the radius. I'm gonna put like really big because it's actually gonna give me like this like bevel effect. Um, so I have this here. Now I get like this bevel. The bevel needs to be clean maybe a little bit, not too much. And it's going to be clean, be clean the same way as like I did before. Oops. 
How much minutes do I have left? None. <laughs> what? But there's overtime now. It's no. It's an error. Oh really? I'm Jesus. Sorry. Yeah, All sorry. right. Okay. Uh, That's why I was smoking you out there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see that. Jesus. All right. Let me to smoke you out. I mean, okay. I can, I can watch you do this for a lot longer, but you know. All right, all right, all right. Well, okay, so technically, I'm not going to do it like because I can't and don't have the time, but technically what I would do next is basically just like add in like smaller details. Maybe I'm yeah. going to want to like have a cavity here, cavity here. I'm going to grab like an alpha. Holy <laughs> smoke. Uh, here we go. <laughs> like this, like this. Poof. See? That's the Super power of you guys. Yes! Right? <laughs> oh my god. But, so it's Amazing. just, see, it's perfect, perfect. It's perfect. But it's just, it's just to say that um, this is really the technique that I've used. It's just I was not pressed for time for like, doing it. But there's no more, like, there's no more magic. It's really H polish, orb crack, using this method, just being careful, take your time, learn from it, and you can get to this, yeah. like, level of detail afterwards. And then you can create this character, and then somewhat can actually just, like, completely destroy it and use it as a, uh, as a base for a uh, Show that finished guy. There it is. Like this. Yeah. See? All that work somebody yeah. could say was lost. I like to say that I contributed into like, something nice. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Um, well, I mean, since it's finished, I'm just going to say like, thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for ZBrush for also creating the software, because <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's really great to be an org organic, organic artist uh, and have organic techniques, but still be able to do hard surface, still yeah. able to do concepts, still able to do like full production work within the software. So I mean, it, it, we're really glad that it exists. We're thankful for ZBrush, and we hope to see cool stuff coming from Absolutely, them. yeah. Right. And you guys really did a great job of showcasing uh, a really diverse sort of uh, series of workflows. So thank you again uh, on behalf of all of us at the Pixelogic team and everyone watching around the globe here in the live studio audience. Put your hands together again for Chaos Maison. <laughs> and uh, we have Guillaume, Cedric, and Marco. Thank you so much, guys. And we'll do a photo op with Julie the mannequin uh, right here. <laughs>